and welcome back to the boardroom. Those of us who've been with us before will know that we are having conversations with some of Malta's top business minds, and we're asking them for their insight into what's gonna happen over the next few weeks and months to come when it comes to business and our economy. We are streaming live at the moment, so if you're watching us live on Facebook, please do add your questions and your comments below because we'd love to put them to our interviewees today. Of course, if you didn't manage to catch us live, no problem. This will be streamed back later on whoswho.mt. That's Malta's leading business portal. Now, today's topic is marketing, and we're going to be talking about what businesses need to do to keep themselves in the spotlight. What marketing should they be doing at this time? How is the marketing landscape going to change in the weeks and months to come? It's a topic that, as a PR professional, I'm particularly passionate about, so I look forward to joining the conversation with two colleagues of mine. They are Chris Mifsut. Chris is the executive director at MPS Limited, one of Malta's leading marketing groups. Um, he's currently executive director, previously COO and CEO. And Bjorn is the CEO and founder of Think. Um, he's a software engineer by profession and driven by a love of creating software, helping clients to transform their offering in the digital world. Chris and Bjorn, great to see you. Thanks for joining us on the boardroom. Thanks for having us, Joe. Hi, Joe. Yeah. So we're going to jump straight in today. I can see that you're both in your offices, so I don't need to know that you're um, at home or you know how you're spending your lockdown period. And I'd love to know, Chris, first of all, what was the instant response to marketing when COVID hit? What was the first thing that changed in the marketing world? All right, Joe. Well, basically, um, okay. In our case, we represent clients of different sectors, but but there was a sectoral lockdown essentially, uh, which was imposed by by government. Um, and so, whilst it wasn't instant, if your sector was hit or closed down, obviously one of the fast, quickest measures you took, apart from the HR measure, would be to to con to 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 stop or slow down your marketing. I would say significantly. Um, it's a pretty obvious reaction. Marketing usually, at least the, let's say the, the area we're in, is one of the largest items, if not the largest items on the, our client's income statement. So it's the first thing that you'd, you'd, you'd uh, curtail. Also because you're not allowed to operate. So if you're a retail, if you're a shopping mall, you, it's, it's, it's nearly pointless to keep on pushing that same message. Doesn't doesn't mean that absolutely no marketing was done. Just to give you an idea, our our turnover didn't go to absolute zero. Uh, there are different messages that can go out there, but essentially the the first impulse is to, to control costs. One of which is 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 marketing. After the HR uh, issues were tackled first, most of our clients, including ourselves, uh, addressed the HR, the health, uh, medical aspect to it, and you know remote working. Uh, protocols and then would tend to, to costs, one of which would be marketing. Okay, perfect. So for those watching us, you might see that we've unfortunately lost Bjorn. We're aware that he was having a few technical difficulties, one of the joys of operating in this new online environment we're living in at the moment. So we hope that if his internet get back, gets back to normal, he'll be able to join us again. And Chris, let's uh, let's continue on our conversations. And, and you were sort of, you were talking about the fact that people are now watching their bottom lines. Businesses are watching their bottom lines, perhaps more than they were previous to this. Um, we, we knew that maybe 2020 was going to be a game-changing year, that things were going to change, perhaps, um, you know, from the trajectory that we've been on previously. Um, but obviously, this was a total black swan out of left field. So um, how do you think people are going to react? Are businesses going to market less? Are they going to market smarter? And in today's world, what does it even mean to market smarter? Ah, very interesting, uh, the, the Black Swan reference as well, Joe. Basically, like as you said, 2020, you know, everyone was talking about, okay, it's going to be time to trim the fat. It won't, I always believed that, you know, it wouldn't be any crashes. Um, I just believed it would be a slowdown, which was, which was due. Um, and I think obviously one of the slowdowns would be in, in expenses. But coming back to, um, coming back to, to the marketing side of things, I think this will, this this pandemic will essentially accelerate the smartness of it. It's not all doom and gloom. So digital has seen not growth, but but sustained um, uh, sustained figures being kept in some areas, in some other areas, growth as well. Um, uh, but I, I think this will be will be more of a measure into looking at smarter marketing, as you mentioned, uh, cleverer, more strategic. Uh, maybe more on digital, why not? And it, it, it 
it should be there. Now we're way past the age of saying, you know, digital should grow. I mean, this is we're talking 10, 12 years ago now. So um, I'd, I'd, I'd be very interested to see what Bjorn has to say, obviously. But I think it will be a question of smarter, better, stronger, and also maybe more real. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's, it's a good time for now for brands to echo really what's at their core and cut the, trim the fat, so to speak, cut out the frills and, and be very true to what they represent in the story they're telling. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Chris. And welcome back, uh, Bjorn. Don't worry, we explained internet challenges of the moment. Thanks for, for coming back. And um, in fact, I'll come over to you, Bjorn, to talk to us a little bit about about the digital side of things. You know, in Malta, um, we find that, you know, while abroad digital has been huge for a long time yes locally it's been growing but maybe we haven't taken the quantum leaps especially amongst smes um, that other countries have taken so just explain to us what is a digital transformation and and when is the right time to switch your offering to digital well uh, i think now clients are starting to appreciate um digital transformation so basically it, it is um transforming all your inner workings um, to the digital world. So changing all, uh, all processes, etc. I think now clients are actually appreciating um, what we used to try and drill, drill in and, and tell them, listen, you need to go digital, you need to change your processes, you need to use the, the web as, as a different channel. Um, and you've got people like insurance agencies now who, who are thankful that they have online quotes you can uh, renew your policies online you've got um, online shops obviously that that uh, allow you to, to to buy products and get them delivered home and now clients are also appreciating the the, the comfort of having to do this from the from, from the home so they don't have to waste time to go to the shop and come back um, they can choose the the right shoes uh, during the night so so i think businesses will now start appreciating and this will be a, a, a shift um, uh, when it comes to, to, to the online business. Absolutely. And, and Bill, maybe you can go into a bit more detail. What does this look like? You know, a company who's out there thinking, right, I want to get started on my marketing online. I do want to take the shift digital, maybe not entirely, because we know that in Malta, some traditional methods are still extremely strong. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I want to take that leap. I want to start. Where do I do, where do I make that change? First of all, well, I mean, digital isn't for everyone. So, so there are companies which will find it more difficult than others to offer what they currently have online. So let's let's take, for example, doctors. Um, it, it's much tougher for a doctor to, to do his job um, uh, digitally. However, there are platforms now, and you're seeing them, a lot of them pop out um, uh, um, online where you can have uh, an online consultation, but it's still not 100% there, you know? Sometimes a doctor needs to have a face-to-face -face, um, uh, visit. Um, so it, it's basically looking at your current processes and seeing whether you could pivot your your um, uh, your workings to to uh, basically offer them online. I mean, an insurance agency would have never dreamt of uh, having their policies online 15 years ago, um, but now obviously it's it's the norm. Um, so it, it, it required them to, to change their policies and, and be uh, easier with data protection and all that. So, Brilliant. Okay, thanks, Bjorn. Really helpful. Chris, I'm going to come over to you. Um, I know, obviously, that you are, are heavy into digital as well, lots of digital marketing and online that you do for your clients. But I'm curious, do we think people are going to get bored of screen time? I mean, we've had so much screen time in the past few weeks, more than ever. You know, are people going to become more selective with what they use, you know, their screens for, what they spend their time looking at online? I love what you said earlier about sort of getting more real. Could that be a way around it? Yes, uh, Joe, obviously it, there, there's a bit of a, what we call a media glut. This happens every five, four years or so with elections, with World Cups, with, 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 with unfortunately, you know, tragedies or big, where there's a big news item, there's a media glut, so there's a bit of an overload. Um, in this case, let's say that the proportions are now shifted more heavily to, to, to digital. I'm talking only about news for now. So, yes, there is a, a bit more of a natural selection going into place where the more relevant or intriguing content will get, will get the limelight before others. But this is always the case, Joe, really, we're always, we're always, uh, we're always exposed to many more messages than we can consume. So uh, this, is, this hasn't tipped the balance, really. To tip the balance, 
you're talking about a few hundred messages a day and you're exposed to thousands more than that. So, and what, what went in for, for that uh, scenario goes for this as well, just let's say on steroids. In as much as, yes, the content, the message needs to be maybe more relevant, better placed, better timing, more emotive, if it's, if it's anything to do, uh, if it has any level of emotion to it, uh, more pragmatic, if it's that kind of, of, of if it has that kind of texture. Um, so, yes, you're right, there's more of a club, but we've been through it. I mean, we've been doing this for, for decades now, and the, the same the same principle applies, the tool changes. So more media, more consumption, maybe an overload, maybe a burnout, you're right. Uh, maybe it's just too much. Um, the Famously, Netflix, who are probably one of the few companies that are doing better in these times. I think the CEO or the CEO, I can't remember who, uh, quoted that their biggest competitor is sleep basically not not anyone it makes a lot of sense because you're just now fighting to keep people awake to consume more media in their case content so yes you're right but the same rule applies you just go in with better content uh, in in my in my view i'm not, I'm not sure if i can maybe um latch on to something beyond said about uh the medical profession i and i think it's super interesting and and it's a brilliant example that he has um and it really encompasses what this means to digital and everything else so we've seen um, uh, platforms going up on with, with where you can consult with your doctor. Um, and this happened obviously through, you know, we were forced into a corner and, and, and it just had to come about. But, but the interesting thing I find for platforms like this is that people have been doing it case in point with their doctor already in a more informal way through WhatsApp, you know, I don't know, asking your doctor, listen, by the way, this happened to me, I'm feeling like this, what do you think? Obviously a doctor, right, this all will always tell you, listen, come and see me. Informally, they tell you, listen, you know, you had this last month, maybe you should look at this, what have I given you then, and stuff like that. This, so this has been happening since we had, let's say, WhatsApp. This pandemic has now given rise to platforms which have just made it formal, which is which is a fantastic way of, of illustrating what Bjorn said, of saying, okay, you've kind of been doing it, it's maybe flirting with it, informally, it's not regulated, blah, blah. This has made you go to a formal platform, such as these platforms that, that Bjorn mentioned. I think it's a, it's a it's a really good way of picturing it over there, frankly. Yeah, that's a that's a great picture, actually. And of course, you know, that's something that's quite unique to the Maltese market. You know, if I had to speak to sort of my friends in the UK, the US, they don't really WhatsApp their doctor or their exactly. lawyer, etc., to get their to get their information. It's something that's quite unique to the local market, and it is a great opportunity for people to be formalizing formalizing in this time. Um, uh, we're also seeing, um, uh, I don't know if you'd agree, Chris, with the with the power of niche and how important niche is coming. A bit like what you said about talking directly to a particular consumer. I think in Malta we sometimes suffer from um, uh, the issue of trying to be all things to all people, whereas I personally feel that marketing going forward in the really busy online space, we're going to have to get better at really targeting our marketing to specific people in our audience. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, you're right. Unfortunately, however, Joe, this is a contradiction of the Maltese economy, I would say. Mm -hmm. So you can either be... so so. In Malta, a lot of businesses, groups of companies, privately held or not, uh, tend to diversify. It's very popular. It's, it's also done abroad, so like it's done only here. But being such a small market, um, uh, going niche or specializing usually doesn't give, let's say, the, the ambitious profits or expectations that diversifying means. It can lead to, you know, being trying to be all things to all to everyone and, 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 you know, master of none, but it's not unusual that you, that you do that here. So there is a contradiction where I totally agree with what you're saying. And in terms of messaging and marketing, you should, you have to be very relevant to, to, to your audience. Um, I always use an example, you know, with plan at the end and with, and with client. If you can ask one question to someone giving, giving a brief, it will be who's the audience. You know, if you're only given that one question to but that will make you tailor make a very interesting uh, message. So yes, ideally you do tell me, but you will there is a commercial contradiction to it in that if you go to me, it's either too costly or you're talking about splitting hair so much that doesn't have a, a critical mark to make it easy. Okay. Absolutely. And um, we're seeing sort of 
globally pe people talking about obviously a slowdown in a slightly positive way as well a slightly yeah. um, less fast-paced uh, lifestyle uh, maybe less consumerism um chris how do you think that's going to affect the marketing sphere Yes, well, on a, on a social level, you know, perhaps you could ask, maybe we needed it. Maybe we needed to cool down both on a national level and maybe even globally. The obvious winner being the environment, which is possibly the most important winner in, in all this uh, a play, a participant in this race, frankly, but, but anyhow. Um, so maybe a, a slowdown, a time to think, even at a business level, is, uh, is, is never a bad thing. Um, obviously, what, what remains to be seen uh, is the is the rapidity of, of picking up back to our old ways, the good and the bad, I, I think. Um, uh, and you know if you, if you look at, if you look at again talking economically over the past 40 years, uh, usually demand has caught up with capacity and growth goes back within 10 to 18 months. Now obviously you're comparing a pandemic to a, a recession so, you know, but, but we can only go on the data we know. So usually 10 to 18 months is what it takes for demand to catch up with capacity and for growth to start. So let's say we dug ourselves out of the hole and started climbing up. Obviously, it's anyone's guess, Joe's. It's, it's a very, um, you know, very difficult um, bet to make. But yes, I think looking at how, how, how we reignite, I think it will change. I do agree with this new normal, even though it's just a buzzword, very in case of our industry, at least, buzzwords, but it, but it will be true. There will be a new, a new normal. I frankly think it's quite exciting. And I don't think, I mean, you know, you can't be complacent in any business, least of all in the business that Bjorn and I are in. I mean, there's, there's no way you can be set in your ways. You can, you can try and latch on as much and hold on as much as you like, but you'll be cast by the wayside. And I think it, there will be good opportunities, exciting new ways of doing things. And it will be interesting to see what clients think about what their new way is going to be and what we are going to advise them from what we see in the environment, uh, in the media environment out there. So, I mean, that's at least nice. I'm not sure if I answered your question. But I'm just... No, absolutely. Very, very interesting. Um, I'll just segue slightly and to say to our viewers that if you would like to ask um, any questions or have any comments for our interviewees today, please just drop them below on Facebook and we'll try to get to them shortly. Bjorn, welcome back again. <laughs> um, uh, while we've got you, don't worry. Um, I'm curious to know what you think um, the future of online campaign campaigns look like. Um, so obviously we know where we are at the moment. We know that we're in a, a very busy space online. Um, you know, what are these campaigns going to look like as we go forward and how should people be splitting their budgets? Obviously speaking specifically about online. Well, I think budgets are going to reduce, um, whether it will be uh, reduced from uh, conventional marketing um, and increased into digital. Um, so I think people need to be smarter with, with uh, where they spend their money. Um, so I, I think one of the ways to, to be smart is to be agile. Um, so basically react to um, the data that's being driven into the business, whether um, uh, one way of marketing and one avenue is, is better than the other and shifting all your budget towards that, that, that channel. So for example, Facebook is working whilst uh, LinkedIn marketing isn't working. And so, so I think uh, it, it's going to be a smarter way of, of, of trying to market your products. We're seeing, for example, a, a big shift into um, investing into uh, loyalty programs, for example, where clients know that um, winning over the client once um, and then they'll have a target audience, you know, to market in the future. So, so I think the future of marketing is that it's trying to be more intelligent uh, with spending your money um, to have a, a better ROI, basically, return on investment. Absolutely. And, and with that in mind, I mean, something that we've really been noticing in this shift to online, Malta, we, we, we so often think only of Malta as our market. And of course, some businesses do only have Malta as their marketing, but as their market, but with this massive shift online, can we be looking over things for, for some of our success? Are there opportunities for Maltese companies who previously were only operating in the local market to now widen what they're doing as an operation? Chris, I'll come to you first. Yes, it's in fact in the past few years, Joe, I'm sure Bjorn has come across this, especially in, in the digital field, we used to say stop thinking of Malta as a 
as too small as too small because over the past three years the population has grown the economy was doing pretty well uh, a few still a few months ago so we just, so we had a lot of either clients or businesses we're involved in or or, or, or partnered with would say listen you know let's not just throw more away we're too small let's you know uh, because it was it it was becoming a decent market, so what it would might have make its size would 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 fall there would make up for in value per capita. Obviously, what that means is that then it's even easier to transition uh, globally. And yes, Malta has great talent, is great creative uh, equity in, in 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 our own psyche. We are survivors by very nature. We are very adaptable as as uh, as as people and as even as business players. We're hugely adaptable. Uh, I find, which which makes for you know better a better better survival rate, and I think that will. This is the talk that was going on before. I find that listen, Malta is a decent market. Let's crack it. Let's make a good return from Malta, and then take it abroad or do it at the same time. And I think that this will keep on going. In, in your in your example, obviously, you, you you might have people saying, okay, now we have to do that because we didn't have we don't have a choice. But I'm pretty certain that most business owners in Malta have always tried to, you know, cross our shores if they could, even in good times. It's not, uh, it's not really something of about, you know, we have enough revenue here. Let's let's leave it at that. You're always looking to expand globally. Obviously, digital allows you by its very nature that to make a success locally and simply, yeah, simply is really not the right word, but but theoretically switch to to a global market. You can do that, and that's one of the biggest, amazing, uh, the, the most amazing features of digital. So yes, I think we'll see more of it out of necessity because the market is now too small here, yeah? and some of it more out of bold innovation, which is what what we're used to and what we like to see. Absolutely, and I'm just going to dial down on that at the moment. You know, for you, if you were advising a client at the moment, obviously it totally depends on the niche. It totally depends on their market. Um, but you know, what are your tips at the moment for a company that's thinking, right? I need to think about my marketing. My my uh, my budgets are down. I'm not where I was last year or where I was a couple of years ago, and I need to up my game. Where do I start? Yes, well, obviously, coming from where I stand, it's you know hugely biased in that in that sense i would advise some clients we, we're not we're not known for telling clients for what we think they want to hear so some clients would hear one thing and others would hear others depending on what you know your, your very good introduction niche uh, income and so and maybe sanction um, measures that don't allow them to operate fully and so on and so forth um, I think there are huge areas of opportunity, especially for clients who might have been stuck in a stalemate with their biggest competitor or maybe the top five competitors. This is very common with many businesses. There's, you know, one 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 advertiser, one brand, and another three, and they're always stealing churn rates, market share from each other. You know, um, it's a, it's a, it's a zero sum game. It's, it's very common with telcos, insurance, with, with automotive, with, with many industries, FMCG. Um, I think this is a, a way of shaking up, shaking the boat. So finally, getting um, you know leveling. It's kind of like a like a forest fire. It you know it burns everything in its in its in its wake, but leaves a lot of fertile soil. So this is is an opportunity to get back in touch with an audience, maybe reposition yourself, make up for some past gaps that you had, and sell yourself uh, for what you really are, and reach out to the audience in a very genuine way. I also think that. You know, audiences are just people like you and I and Bjorn Joe, not no one special. I also think that um, you know com the community at large will know who was there for them when they needed them and when and when they didn't. So, and I think brands have a responsibility to be there for the good and the bad as well. So they 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 also need to keep being positioned, and if they want to uh, leverage the fact that they have I don't know 50, 60, 20 year history, they they need to leverage the fact that they still that they will weather this storm as well. Uh, with their with their customers, and and there's a lot of opportunity. Obviously, I would advise some clients to hold tight. I would advise clients who are not you know not in not in uh, not allowed to operate to a certain extent uh, to 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 uh, retract their advertising, to consolidate, to think about it, to plan longer term, to see if their audiences they're addressing are still relevant, to see if the message needs to change, and so on and so forth.
Apologies for that, viewers. Um, I actually had a power cut um, there, so I lost the internet completely. This is going to go down in history as the broadcast in which we have the most technical problems. So again, I apologize for anyone that's watching us. And Chris, you were giving us such great advice there. So I'm not sure when I when we lost you, <laughs> but um, I want to jump straight back into what you were saying about where people can start if they don't have a strategy in place. Okay. Um, well, basically, Joe, what I what I what I said is uh, what I mentioned is that it, it is the time. You know, you have certain industries where there's a, there'll be a bit of stalemate, a bit of some stalemates. For example, you know, you have three, four competitors always vying for first place. They they churn clients, and customers between them, and it's a bit of a zero sum. And and they and they historically, you know, there are many sectors like that. Uh, car rental, insurance, FMCG, telcos, there are a lot of sectors like that. And something like this, you know, kind of rocks the boat and, and changes the landscape a bit. Uh, um, you know, like a forest fire I mentioned, burns down everything and leaves some fertile ground. And that could be a good opportunity for, for, for business and for brands in those sectors to reinvent themselves, fill in some gaps that they had, which they never addressed, realize what gaps that they had and do a good analysis and push themselves and maybe change and, and come out of this in a different position than they were above. You just shake things about basically and get out of ruts and complacency and, and, and give some new wind in their things. Obviously, this costs money. And then there's the other counter argument that you know, a lot of brands are, are feeling the pinch uh, because of the reduced uh, spending that there is. So you have to do that with a bit of thought. You need to get into some good strategy sessions with, with their advisors and plan and plan for this. But essentially, I would give the advice to some brands or some industries that it's the right time to, to address any gaps you had and maybe come out of this stronger or not stronger, different from where you were before. Mm -hmm. And these gaps could be the way you were communicating, the tone you used, the, the channels you used, and so on and so forth. I would give some advice to other clients, other brands, who maybe should sit tight and reduce their spending to, to more of a minimum, uh, keep a, an open conversation, because I think you should always keep an open conversation. We need to realize that brands need to know that they are not there to just leverage their customers for the money when they want and then you know switch off a tap. I think there's an element of being in good times and the bad, uh, both in terms of, of, of reaching out to an audience and into the promise that brands make to, to this audience. So. But, but, but the conversation would obviously be different with certain brands that were affected differently, uh, such as to, the, the tourism sector. So yeah, obviously there's an obvious ban on on, on travel. So it would be diff it would be difficult to um, to try and encourage uh, you know an increase in spending in that respect. But even in tourism, you could reach out with a different message. Uh, but you, I, I think you still need to reach out. You can't be there just you know, uh, a fair weather friend, as they say. They need okay. to reinvent themselves. They need to shift more, more to, div to digital, for sure, if that's what they need to do. If they never did it, this might get them to do it. Uh, if they have done it, they really need to reconsider what they were, were communicating to who. And I think it's a great opportunity to get out of a rut, if you are in one. Absolutely. And Bjorn, I'll, I'll bring that um, over to you, if we have you at the moment. I'm not sure we do. Bjorn, can you hear me? Okay, so we've lost Bjorn again, unfortunately. Um, uh, so I was going to use that as an opportunity to talk a little bit about strategy. And I think that is the, the sort of uh, key thing that we're certainly advising our clients to do, because I think there's a lot of panic at the moment, especially at the beginning of all this, there was huge panic. And so sort of people were reacting very quickly, making changes, you know, just, just kind of reacting in the moment, not really thinking through the decisions they were taking when it came to their marketing. And now, as you said, this is the perfect time to sit down and plan that strategy. Your goals might look different than they look a few months ago but if you have those goals in mind then it becomes so much easier to be able to take the marketing decisions you need to be able to take to achieve that rather than that just say shooting from the hip and sort of doing whatever pops into your head you know a facebook post here an article here this that and the other yeah. having a strategy having a goal and then working towards it will be a much more cohesive plan for for sort of getting success from um chris i'd love your thoughts on on any campaigns perhaps international campaigns that stand out in your mind at, at the moment i mean to me you are the advertising guy i think of you and i think of sort of really great advertising strategy what have you been seeing online and just thinking wow that works I Thanks for that, first of all. And secondly, I, I think, you know, the ones which have really stood out are the more 
emotional ones. I mean, we, we a lot of a lot of our clients, a lot of businesses um, deal in a commoditized sector. So essentially, meaning that the, the product offering, the product itself, is really very different one from another. So the phone call between I don't know one telco operator and the other, the actual phone call is is not exactly different. It's the emotional bond essentially that the brand been, builds with its audience, with its customers. That, that takes off, that removes that commoditization and gives value to the brand. And I think this is true of many industries. So in, in my eyes, the ones which have stood out more, uh, even though we're now getting a bit tired of them, unfortunately, it's, it's a terrible thing of human nature that we the novelty wears off pretty rapidly in, in many things, unfortunately, but that's just the way we are, uh, which are more emotive of airlines, for example, saying, listen, we'll be back, you know, this will pass and reminding people of the good times they had a lot of tourist destinations, including Malta, showing empty beaches that ironically look better when they're empty. Um, uh, but but obviously we need the tourist numbers to fill them. Uh, saying you know this is you know it's still out there, it's still beautiful, even though there's the zombie apocalypse out there. It's still you know the, the the beach and the sun and the sunrise and the sunset and the beautiful landscapes are still there. I'm not talking only about Malta here. Obviously the the campaigns which go out to NHS and the, you know the hospital in Malta as well and the nurses and the medical workers. I think right now there's a bit of camaraderie going on, which is, let's say, unusual. And it's really nice to see people respond. It's nice to see people channeling these kind of campaigns, which are very more emotional. And they don't have a commercial end to it, ironically, which is which is great. So I think this is a perfect example, Joe, of being still present and not telling, you're not just hiding and going back in your shell because it doesn't pay you to advertise or to be out there. But showing that, listen, you're still there, you're still around. I'm not asking you to part with money or to consume anything. I'm just telling you, you know, this is the way the world is now. Might be a new world on the other side, but we'll still be there. And any one of these campaigns, even locally, there are quite a few. Could be anything from a Facebook post to a full-on campaign. I mean, for the few people who are going out, you'll see a lot of um, outdoor advertising is actually filled with this kind of um, messaging because it's unfortunately dead space right now and it's and it's taken a hit. But I think these kinds of more emotional connection ones, and emotional sounds like a soft word, but, but it's not. It's, it's really building uh, a connection between a brand and its audience, which is in this case not about a commercial, doesn't have a commercial call to action of buy this, click here, and what have you. And I think the, this is the, the foundation building that will get audiences to respond when we come out on the other side to this new normal with whatever we might be asking for of them uh, on that side for their time, their attention, their hard and money. Exactly. Uh, and these are the ones that have struck me the most. Uh, the ones you're exactly. So sort of to use industry speak, this is the sort of nurture campaign. This is the time when we really yeah. connect to people and, yeah. um, and and we sort of give them a little bit. And then obviously longer term, then hopefully we, we've gained that relationship and yeah. we've been there for them when uh, yeah. when when things got tough and then we can sort of you know build that relationship further into sales going forward um, might, oh, sorry to interrupt uh, but it, but the question which gets asked many times is for example why does coke why does coca cola one of the most valuable brands in the world keep on advertising like they're established for eight years plus everyone knows it and and this is essentially part of the same answers two sides of the same coin it's that the, the, the reason why they advertise or they reach out is because this is a constant conversation you're having with someone. It's not a, you know, you remember me, you'll never forget me, so I'm going to leave or stop talking kind of thing. Absolutely, uh -huh. absolutely. Um, to switch conversations slightly and to talk about uh, sort of you as an agency, one of the agencies on the island, um, agencies have been severely hit, right? So um, uh, obviously this is a tough time for agencies, but you're not in Annex A. Um, uh, the government is helping companies that are that are contributing zero percent to the economy as they're shut down, um, uh, and and kind of our agencies being left out in the cold. There, should we be doing more to keep our agencies sort of safe and going, considering how important they will be, you know, when things kickstart again? Uh, it's a it's a good question. Obviously, very relevant, and I'm going to give you a very biased answer. Clearly, as as you are in the same industry as us, so you know it applies to you, to you as well, and, and that's. And that's the truth. But um, really, I mean, agencies or the, the extended creative field, so agencies, content writers, videographers and digital and social managers and so on and so forth, are still a very small part of the economy. So if you have to group all of us all together, even with the extended, you know, freelancers, we're still talking a blip in, in, in the GDP. 
Um, so my, my opinion really what applies to me, to us, applies to frankly anyone um, who is directly, and I won't use the word indirectly, directly exposed to some a shutdown like this because, you know, we're looking at the flights having stopped, tourism having stopped. This pandemic is nothing if proof that the country is essentially totally reliant on, on tourism. Um, I, I, for example, do not work directly for, for, I think I have very few clients that I work for directly in the tourism, so hotels, are, and if we do, we have some work, but it's not, it's not, it's, the relevance isn't there. The relevance is that because these, uh, these sectors have stopped, essentially within months, then the country stopped. Agencies, for what it's worth, to, to add with another list, are on this famous Annex B, which is a measure um, issued by the government of, of, of helping, of helping, uh, of giving wage supplements. I, mean, I think the bigger, the strongest case for this going on this famous Annex A, which is uh, significantly higher, is that it gives you more runway. This is now a conversation and has always been since the pandemic started of runway. So of burning through cash, liquidity, profitability is, is not even being spoken about for now because it's, it's, we're, we're still far away from that, of burning through liquidity to make sure you can get out of this alive. And slowly, slowly, as the measures start relaxing, as they started relaxing last week with some retail opening, hopefully we'll ca catch up again. In my book, at least the way I see it, is that if there is help, it should be universal because that will only allow us to kickstart faster. Otherwise, if some start faster than the others, then the others have a time lag and, you know, they were not all kickstarting the economy at the same time. I think this is just a question of, of you know, burning through the months. Uh, we do have work, so I'm not going to pretend, you know, we're, we're staring. We, we are in some areas extremely busy, uh, in others, not at all. And obviously, overall, we're down uh, from, in terms of figures, like everyone is. Um, but also, you know, you need to have some, you need to have some, some good foundation to make sure you can keep yourself going for a few months. The unfortunate um, question to ask, the uncomfortable question to ask is how long and when do we get out of this? Um, if you, I mean, you know, you ask me flat out if I agree or I don't. My, my, and I've said this before publicly, my, my basic um, prerogative is that I think a lot of the help should be universal to a certain extent and not make such a distinction between uh, sectors because eventually it's going to hit everyone so this point is having us on different you know half-lives and, and, and burning out at different rates i think obviously the government's uh, funding is not a bottomless pit and, and and we have to look at that as well uh, i can understand that but i think it would be unfortunate to see certain recoveries happening much faster than others because of certain assistance in, in some area, if you know what I mean. I think it, it's better for the economy to kind of collectively slow down and collectively build up, if, if that's possible, of course. Okay, brilliant, Chris. Very, very insightful and, and great to know, great to know your position on it as well. So to wrap up, for those that are watching us today, um, sort of in the, in the marketing sphere, what is the most important thing that businesses from a marketing perspective can take away from this period? Okay, I think it's uh, I think it's a uh, you know a singularity and a one in a million years maybe a hundred years flu uh, that happened to us and we should just say you know what um, you know what 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 did you get from the pandemic basically what did you learn from the pandemic what did the pandemic give you why because it's very it's, it's you know it's it's a very odd thing to happen uh, it's not a good thing obviously but it's a very strange and unusual thing to happen that makes us all stop in our tracks reach out and look at each other and say okay well, what do we do now. And I think that is a window that we have to stop, reflect, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Are we doing it because we've been doing it for 40 years? Or we're doing it because, you know, there's a good reason to do it. Re, uh, Reconsolidate our position, re-examine what we do. And, you know, you have, you have, a, guess you have a gift in a way. I know it sounds maybe overly optimistic, not, not, not necessarily... Um, without wanting to sound naive, but it is it does give you an opportunity from this very fast-paced business life that we lead to stop in your tracks and say, okay, then you know why was I doing something and what, what was I doing it for the right reason and what can I do differently now going forward? If we just take that, whether it's spending, not spending, cutting costs, increasing investment, consolidating, I don't know, you know, uh, merging, whatever it might be, which is relevant to your industry. I think it's it's a great chance and it's a great excuse for us all to be able to do it. You know, where where after this we won't have an excuse if if we were going into a wall, so to speak. This has 
accelerated that. So we have, you know, we have to use this opportunity to make sure that we address it. I think it's, it's. I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's, you know, it's very unusual that it's happened, and it's and it's a way. And you shouldn't waste your pandemic, really. You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't waste the opportunity, this window that we've given, we've been given. I think. Absolutely, great. Right from all the negative medical and horrible things which are happening. I mean, you know, it's not the right forum, but but that's yeah. Absolutely. Uh, now, I take your advice, Chris. I think we all do. This is the time to sort of reassess uh, what we were doing in our businesses, maybe what marketing we were doing, uh, to look at, to strategize, and to sort of come out stronger than ever. And Chris, I really appreciate your input. Thank you for sticking with us. It's been a slightly cursed show from a technology perspective uh, with internet failures and even a power cut. Um, uh, but thank you for being with us. Um, thank you to Bjorn as well, who unfortunately we won't um, have back on the show at this time, but we would like to invite back at a, at a later date. And thank you all at home or in the office for sticking with us as well. An unusual show, but I'm sure lots of great advice there for anybody thinking about their marketing strategy going forward. Um, this was the boardroom. If you didn't catch it live, you can do so on whoswho.mt, where it will be streaming and you can share it with friends and colleagues. And we hope to see you for our next episode, which will be on Friday on the boardroom. Thank you very much. <laughs>